How can the moon have water? It's dry, it's dusty, it does not have weather, it has only the most tenuous of atmospheres. It's blazingly hot, it's numbingly cold. No clouds ever form above the moon, no rivers flow, no seas lap gently at lunar shores. 17th century astronomers gave the prominent dark areas on the moon the names of seas like Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rain. But they are not seas, they are plains of ancient lava, billions of years old. No soft spring rain will ever fall on Mare Imbrium. There's an ocean on the moon too, Oceanus Procellarum, the Sea of Storms. But no dark storm clouds will ever gather above it. So how could there ever be water on our beautiful natural satellite? One of the earliest proponents of the idea that there might be water on the moon was Harold Urey, a Nobel Prize winning chemist who speculated in the 1950s and 1960s about the possibility of volatile compounds, including water ice, being trapped in cold regions of the moon. However, the concept became more concrete in 1961 when Kenneth Watson, Bruce Murray and Harrison Brown published a paper in the Journal of Geophysical Research suggesting that water molecules from cometary impacts or outgassing could migrate to and become trapped in permanently shadowed regions at the lunar poles. Between 1969 and 1972, the Apollo astronauts returned nearly 600 pounds of rock and soil from the moon. The samples underwent intense scrutiny from scientists around the world, a study which, nearly 60 years later, still progresses today. But no water was found in the lunar samples, confirming what scientists thought they knew, that the moon is completely dry. But then, in 1976, the Soviet Luna 24 mission brought back soil samples with traces of hydroxyl, but this was largely overlooked. Hydroxyl, or OH to give it its chemical formula, is a molecule consisting of one oxygen atom and one hydrogen atom. It is not the same as water, but it is closely related. Hydroxyl can form when water molecules break apart or interact with minerals. In the context of the moon, it likely forms through interactions between the solar wind and oxygen in lunar minerals. It's a key indicator of water-related chemistry on the moon, even if it is not in liquid form. In 1994, NASA's Clementine mission detected reflections at the lunar poles suggesting the possibility of ice deposits. Then, in 1998, NASA's Lunar Prospector found hydrogen signatures near the poles interpreted as potential water ice. However, the images returned from both spacecraft were of such low resolution that the discovery of water could not be confirmed. This picture is a later image of the Moon's south pole by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the water marked in blue. But then, in 2008, reanalysis of Apollo samples by Brown University scientists found both hydroxyl and water molecules. It seemed that initial analysis of the Apollo moon rocks had overlooked them due to the inadequate analytic technology of the time. Then, in 2009, India launched their Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft to the moon. Mapping the moon's surface with an X-ray spectrometer, the spacecraft created maps of mineral deposits. But it also released a small impactor, which, striking the moon's surface, also detected both hydroxyl and water molecules. NASA's LCROSS mission, launched in 2009, aimed to confirm the presence of water ice in permanently shadowed lunar craters. The mission targeted the Cabeus crater near the moon's south pole, where previous data suggested potential ice deposits. LCROSS deliberately crashed its Centaur rocket stage into the crater at high speed, creating a debris plume. The LCROSS spacecraft, following closely behind, analysed the ejector before it too impacted the surface. The debris plume was also analysed by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. 
instruments detected water ice along with other volatiles, confirming that significant amounts of frozen water exist in these shadowed regions. This discovery was a major milestone, strengthening the case for future lunar exploration and resource utilisation, including human missions and potential in situ resource use. Elcross provided concrete evidence that the Moon holds accessible water, which could be critical for sustaining long-term lunar bases. There may be more than a billion tonnes of water ice locked up in the permanently dark craters at the Moon's poles where the temperature is a constant minus 230 degrees Celsius. So where did it all come from? Water-rich comets and asteroids bombarded the Moon in its early history, particularly in a period about three and a half billion years ago known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, depositing ice that became trapped in permanently shadowed craters. It may also have come from hydrogen in the sun's solar wind, reacting with oxygen in lunar minerals to form hydroxyl and small amounts of water. There were also ancient lunar volcanic eruptions which released water vapour, some of which could have migrated to the poles and become trapped in cold regions. And the moon is constantly being bombarded with small meteoroids containing hydrated minerals delivering water molecules to the moon over time. That water ice can be used by future human bases on the Moon. It could be used to extract the oxygen from the ice for breathing, further processed to produce rocket fuel, be used for radiation shielding, agriculture, hydroponics, thermal regulation, industry and many other applications. All we need to do is to find the ice and figure out an extraction and transportation system but there is no doubt that the ice is there in large amounts. In 2023, India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft landed at the South Pole of the Moon to search for water, but only detected hydrogen and oxygen separately, not as H2O. The US and Russia have also launched spacecraft to find the water, but so far their missions have failed. However, the US, Russia, China, India and Japan are all sending missions to the Lunar South Pole to search for the water over the next couple of years, so it's likely that at least one of those countries will find the water and eventually construct a base at the South Pole of the Moon. It's taken 70 years since the first suggestions that there might be water on the Moon, but at last it looks as though we may find it and use it for the advancement of human lunar exploration. And there you have the story of water on the Moon. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll watch the other videos in the Space Oddities Moon Month series. Check out the Moon Month playlist on the Space Oddities channel.